Alrighty, in this lesson, we're going to be looking at derivatives of inverse functions. At the end of this lesson, you will know what an inverse function is, and you will be able to find the derivative of an inverse function. All right, an inverse function is a reflection of another function about the line y equals x. So if I were to draw a picture that looks like this, let's say I draw the um, e to the x function that looks like this, all right? If I reflect it about the line y equal x, it ends up actually being the ln function. And those two would be considered inverses because they are reflections about the line y equal x. Another example might be if I drew something, this would be some sort of cubic function going on here. Okay, if I were to reflect that about the line y equals x, just trying to reflect it here. It's going to look something like that. Those two are also inverse functions because they are reflections of each other about the line y equals x. All right. The inverse of x, um, and just one thing I did want to point out, um, if I have a function that looks like this, like if I have a parabola, a y equals x squared, if I reflect that about the um, x, x, or excuse me, about the line y equals x, I get something that looks like that. Please notice that the inverse on this one is not a function, but we are not going to be dealing with um, problems where the inverse is not a function. We're going to be dealing with ones where the inverse is a function. So the inverse of f of x is denoted as f to the negative one of x, all right? One thing that can get a little bit confusing about that, this is the um, notation for an inverse. Unfortunately, it's, it's also a notation for something to the negative one power. This does not mean f to the negative one power. It simply just means the inverse of f, just so just be careful when you do see that, all right? And then we can also see um, if a, b is a point on the original function, then b a is going to be a point on the inverse. And let me just show you that with this second example here. So if I had, um, let's say this point, getting here is a really good example. Um, just try to find, okay, so let's say this point, let's say that's two zero, then this, I should have drawn that a little bit better. That should go up a little farther then 0, 2 would be on the inverse function. Um, so, okay, this one is a better one. Um, if I have, like, like, let's call that um, 0, negative 4, and then on the inverse, you'll notice that negative 4, 0 is on the inverse. So um, the a's and the b's, they, the y, x and the y end up getting switched around when we do those problems. Okay, so now what we're going to use this for, very popular in calculus, is to find the derivative of an inverse, okay? We don't have to have an equation for the inverse function. We can still find the derivative of the inverse function. So if you look at this, it says left of, let f of x be a function that is differentiable on an interval i, then f inverse um, derivative of x is equal to 1 over f prime of the inverse of x, all right? This looks like a pretty crazy formula, but as we get into it, it's actually not going to be too bad. So as long as we use this formula, we'll be able to find the derivative of an inverse without actually finding the inverse. Okay, so we're gonna pop right into examples. On these examples, I'm always going to do a problem, and then I'm gonna ask you to pause the video and then have you do the problem and then come back and you can check if the video, if you are getting the problem right. Please make sure you do that because it is gonna make sure that you're understanding what's going on in the problem. Okay, so first example says, let f of x equal e to the negative 2x minus 9x cubed plus four. And also notice that f of zero equals five find the derivative of the inverse at five. So that is how I'm reading that. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is write that formula. The derivative of an inverse is one over f prime f inverse of x. All right, now I'm going to, since it says to find the derivative at five, I'm going to rewrite this formula. And a lot of times I'll just start by writing the number in the formula. So this is what we are looking for. So I noticed that this is a composite function. So what I need to do, I need to find what the inverse of five is first, and then I will calculate the derivative of f at that value, okay? So that's the, the process that we are going to be taking. All right, first of all, to find the inverse at five, okay? We know that on the original function, zero, five is a point on the original function. 
Well, if you remember when I was talking about the inverses on the other side, um, they have values that are switched. So zero five, is, if it's on the original, on the um, inverse, it's going to be the point five zero. So if I'm looking for the inverse of five, my point is going to be five zero. So the inverse of five is equal to zero. Notice they're just flip flopped around. So I'm going to come back to my formula and write one over f prime. I know that the inverse of five is zero. Okay, now from here, this says to find f prime of zero. So it's no longer dealing with the inverse at all. So I'm going to go to the function f of x is equal to e to the negative 2x minus 9x cubed plus 4. And I'm going to find the derivative. Okay, so the derivative, the derivative of e to the negative 2x is negative 2 e to the 2x, negative 2x minus 27x squared. And then the derivative of 4 is 0. And now from here, I need to find the derivative at 0. So if I plug in a 0, okay, e to the 0 is 1. I'm going to get negative 2. Um, this will turn out to be 0. So my um, f prime of 0 is just equal to negative 2. So now I'm going to come back to this formula. I know that f prime of 0 is equal to negative 2. And 1 over negative 2 is just negative 1 half. So I have now found the derivative of the inverse at 5. Okay, for example two, what I would like you to do now is please pause the video and I would like you to try to see if you can find the derivative of the inverse on your own. When you come back, you can check to see how you did. All right, welcome back. Hopefully you worked the problem and I'm ready to work it with you to see how you did here. Alrighty, so if we wanna find the derivative of the inverse at um, 13, the first thing that we're going to do is go ahead and write out the problem. So this is gonna be one over f prime f inverse of 13. And then I like to go up here. This means on my original function, I have the point 113, which means on my inverse, my point is going to be 13, 1. Okay, so if I'm asked to find the inverse of 13, the inverse of thir the inverse at 13 is 1. So I now know I have 1 over f prime. The inverse of 13 is 1. Now I need to calculate the derivative at 1. So if I find the derivative, um, I'll get 5x to the 4th plus 9x squared plus 7. And then if I go ahead and plug in 1, I'll get 5 plus 9 plus 7, which is equal to 21. So then just plugging it over here, I end up getting 1 over 21. So that is the derivative of my inverse. Okay, let's try another one. Okay, consider the function h of x is equal to 5 minus x minus x cubed. Let f of x be the inverse of h of x. Notice that h of negative 1 is equal to 7, and then find f prime of 7. So now notice this time it didn't really ever give me, <clears throat> excuse me, to find f negative 1 or anything like that. So what we are going to be doing, but it does say that f is the inverse of h, and I noticed they didn't give me any information at all about f, but they gave me information about h. So I am going to rewrite this. The derivative of x of, of f is the same thing as the derivative of the inverse of h because they're inverses of each other. So those two things are the same thing. So now if I want to find f prime of 7, I'm really looking for the derivative of h, of the inverse of h, excuse me, at 7. So now notice I have everything in terms of h and everything in my problem is also in terms of h. So I'm set to go. So we have 1 over h prime, h inverse of 7. Okay, now just like we did in the previous problem, um, this means on the original function, negative 1, 7 is on the original function. So on my inverse, that point will now be 7, negative 1. So if it's asking me for what is the inverse at 7, the inverse at 7 is negative 1. So I'll have 1 over h prime of negative 1. And then just like in the previous problem, to find h prime of negative 1, we're first of all going to find that derivative. So we're going to get negative 1 minus 3. Okay, sorry. All right, so um, a, I got h prime is equal to negative 1 minus 3x squared. And then finding h prime of negative 1, I will get negative 1 minus 3 times negative 1 squared. That will be negative 1 minus 3 because this negative um, 1x squared will become positive. That was negative 1. So this will equal negative 4. So I have 1 over negative 4, and that is the derivative of f, which is the inverse of h.
Okay, now I'm going to let you try number four. Please again, pause the video and come back when you are stuck or when you are finished and are ready to check your answer. Okay, consider the function f of x is equal to x cubed plus seven x minus two. Let g be the inverse of f. Notice that f of one is equal to 10 and it asked me to find g prime of 10. So g prime of 10, since they actually gave me only information about f, I know that g is the inverse of f, so g prime is the same thing as the derivative of the inverse of f. Okay, now I'm going to rewrite. I know this is equal to 1 over f prime, f inverse at 10. Okay, then I'm going to come over here on my original function. The point is 1, 10. So that means on my inverse, the point is going to be 10, 1. So the inverse at 10 is 1. So we have 1 over f prime of 1. And now we need to find the derivative at 1. So f prime is going to equal 3x squared plus 7. So the derivative at 1 will equal 3 times 1 squared plus 7, which will equal 10. And so just plugging in f prime of 1, I get 1 tenth. So that will be my derivative at 10.